In this beautiful coastal spot in the New Forest, Lisa and Simeon Morgan are patiently rearing a very unusual breed of sheep that only 30 years ago was almost extinct. What we've got here is a pen of um, my Svart Blaze sheep. Svart Blaze means black with a white blaze. I saw them for the first time when I went down to Cornwall with my husband on holiday and I fell in love with them. They're obviously very striking to look at and I thought I'd really like some of those. But Simeon kept saying, no, I couldn't have any. He's an arable farmer, he's not really into animals. So eventually I wore him down and he let me have some, and I had five. The five sheep all gave birth, and soon Lisa had more than she bargained for. It was soon apparent that I needed to be able to do something with the lambs. So um, I thought, well, I'm going to have to send them to slaughter. And they came back and we were really proud of the meat that we produced. Unlike most commercial sheep that are ready for slaughter at six months old, this breed are larger than average and take longer to mature. They reach their perfect weight at around a year. Because these are older, they get a really good marbling. The legs are really big and meaty. The whole animal is really good for both roasting joints but also slow cooking as well. And once people have tried it, they've come back for more and more. The flavour and the texture of the meat vary depending on where the animal's grown up and what it's been given to eat. The coastal pastures that Lisa's sheep are raised on are full of herbs like wild clover, sea aster and lavender. We've got some varieties of, of herbs and grasses that really are favoured to this area of land by the sea. The salt in the air here, it certainly we think it makes a, a, has a, a little edge to the flavour. The five sheep that Lisa started with have grown to a flock of 200. What started as a hobby is now a successful business, with a lamb being sold in a farm shop and supplied to three of the best local restaurants. Hi David. Hello, you alright? Yes, thank you. How are you? Very well, thank you. In fact, local chef David Weeks was so impressed that he's added lamb to the menu in his fish restaurant. The lamb fits into our, our sort of ethos of dishes uh, very well because the quality is second to none, so it wouldn't be on unless the quality was amazing. People buy into the locality of the dish. It's probably be more local than a lot of the fish that's caught in the Solent because the farm is just less than a mile away. And David has spent some time preparing a slow cooked dish to showcase Lisa's lamb. That's amazing. Thank you. It's a really interesting combination because you've got the lamb, which is obviously an earthy flavour, but it's also got some really interesting flavours of the sea. It's really exciting to think that my lamb could be made into such an amazing dish. I love to hear about quality food that's produced so close to my home in Hampshire. So I've invited Lisa and Simeon over for lunch at my house and I'll be showing them my favourite way to slow cook lamb. So how did lamb end up on your farm? Because you're an arable farmer. Yeah, I'm an arable farmer, but uh, Lisa always wanted sheep. So for her 40th birthday, sheep is what she got. Slightly different. Yep. Slightly yeah. different, yeah. Didn't want jewellery or anything else like no, that? No, no, no. I've always admired these sheep. And he, wasn't, he kept saying no. Then he really surprised me. I had yeah. no idea they were coming. And um, they were really bought as lawnmowers to start with and, yeah. um, and as, a, as a hobby for me, but it has obviously grown into something much more than that. I've got an exotic twist on slow-cooked lamb with a dish that will give your spice rack a real workout. It's my Indian spiced lamb shoulder with Bombay potatoes. Normally with curries you dice it all up, but this I'm just going to throw the whole lot in. So it's long slow cooking, about yeah. four hours it takes. Before you cook the lamb, you need to make the mix of no fewer than nine spices to flavour the curry. Start by adding cloves, fenugreek seeds, chilli flakes and a cinnamon stick to the grinder. We're going to toast off two of them, just to get the oils going out the spices. Put the cumin and coriander seeds into a dry pan and let them toast for about two minutes. Then add the toasted spices fennel seeds and black peppercorns into the grinder before blitzing the lot. And once it's powdered, throw in the turmeric. And then it's time to turn your attention to the lamb itself. Straight away I can tell this is sort of an older lamb really, yeah. uh, because of the colour fundamentally. Mm -hmm. uh, does that sort of, I mean once people taste it it's fine, but people looking at this would think well 
you know, that it's not the colour of lamb that it should be. Yeah, the, we have to educate people a little bit about the change of the colour and the fact that it is taken on um, longer um, in the process, but um, it certainly has more flavour, we believe. The next step is to add this generous lamb joint to a large casserole dish and sear it. This is almost at the stage of sort of hog it, isn't it, really, this? Summer? Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. This particular breed of sheep, um, they're very slow growing and their breed characteristic is, is very lean meat. They're an extensive breed, so we want to take them to very nearly hog it, so nearly to a year old, if not just over, to get that extra flavour. And they, if you take them too early, they, they don't finish. You don't get any fat coverage at all because they stay so lean. Next, you need to make the curry sauce that the lamb will cook in. Start by adding a finely chopped onion and chopped green chilli to the pan you've seared the lamb in. Follow on with garlic and ginger, then the spice mix. So of all the cuts of meat that you get from the lamb, and you get such a variety, it's like pigs really, you can use yeah. an entire carcass. What's your favourite? I think probably the shoulder is one that I do with the slow cooking quite often. Um, and I really enjoy mutton leg steaks as well. Mutton leg steaks? Yeah. You can cook those on the barbecue really yeah, nicely as well, can't They're you? so easy to cook. You know, everyone thinks mutton needs to be cooked for hours and hours. I actually prefer mutton leg steaks to beef steak now. But it's still got this perception on it, mutton, really. Yeah. I don't know what, what it is, because it's packed full of flavour. Yeah, but... definitely. When the onion and spices have cooked for two minutes or so, add the torn curry leaves and crushed cardamom pods. And then I'm going to use this. It's quite an unusual thing to put in with this. Generally, I would use this with duck. This is tamarind. I don't know if you've ever right, tried yep, it before. Yep. Um, it is fantastic sort of stuff. When you put it in curries, particularly at the beginning, I've had this sort of stuff on my travels. It goes particularly well if you're going to add coconut to that. But what I'm going to do is add some tomatoes and use tinned tomatoes as a base together with some stock. Throw them in as well. I'm also adding a litre of lamb stock to the pot, but you can use beef stock instead. And then what you do is grab the lamb. And this is one of the great things with this. You just basically cook the entire lot in the pot. Cover this over, stick the lid on it, and what you want to do is cook this slowly for four hours. Now, I don't need to leave you to wait for four hours because I've got one in there, but I'll leave that to one side. You can cook it on the stove, so you could just basically bring it to the boil leave it gently simmering for about four hours. You can eat this with rice, but I prefer to serve it with spicy Bombay potatoes. Start by boiling cubed potatoes, then finely chop a clove of garlic and an onion. Now, I believe you've got a farm shop as well that you've got hand in hand with this. I have. It's, um, it's slightly unusual. It's a pop-up farm shop. We only open two days uh, a month at the moment. Right. Which fits Two days a month? Yep. Well, you've got to be quick then, haven't you, really? You have got to be quick. All right. Ground coriander, cumin, mustard seeds, turmeric and chilli powder go into the pan with the onion and garlic. It's a lot more intensive than arable farming. At least with arable farming, you can sort of chill out on an evening <laughs> and, and relax. But, I mean, you must have found that it sort of changed your life, really, yeah. I suppose. It does have intense periods of work. Obviously, lambing time yeah. is, is full on. But at the same time, it's very rewarding. So. Yeah, if you'd asked me 10 years ago, would I be a sheep and arable farmer, I probably would have said, no, don't be so silly. Once tinned tomatoes have gone in, add the cooked potatoes and simmer for another three to five minutes. The lamb is almost done. All I'm going to do now is add just two little herbs to go with it and mint obviously is the one that you want to do with lamb but I'm going to put some coriander in there as well so throw a little bit in there a little bit in here now you can see as the lamb cooks it just falls apart in the pot and then you can take your chunks of bone out like that there's no fanciness with this no poncing around before you've even tasted this dish, you know you're in for a real treat because of all those spices. It makes it smell absolutely amazing. It's one of those things that you just put it in the pot and forget about it. Because it's a curry, it just gets better and better and better the more you leave it. Try that. Tell me what you think. That's really good. All in all, it adds up to a slow-cooked meal that's bursting with flavour. 
See, I thought in this job I'd seen everything and tasted a lot, but it's amazing that 15 miles down the road, you get lamb as good as this. I've never tasted cooked lamb as good well. as that. Very good lamb, cooked very well. Yeah, but your shop <laughs> needs to be up more than two days a month. Yeah, well that's coming. When good. He, when he buys me some more sheep. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be first in the queue. <laughs>